Hello everyone. My name is Arthur Lee, and I'm a teaching assistant at the University of Toronto for the course called Molecular Pharmacology at Pharmacy School. I'm pretty sure everyone who has been through pharmacy school at University of Toronto has heard of this course because it is notoriously hard. Not really. I took this course in my undergraduate. I think it is pretty cool. All right, let's. That's a lie. All right, let's cut the crap and get into this. This is gonna be my first video, and we will talk about hydropathy plot. Before we talk about hydropathy plot, let's review what cell membrane looks like. As you can see in this cartoon, the cell membrane is mainly made up of sperm-like lipid molecules. Yes, sperm-like. These lipid molecules are very flexible, and、uh, they generally have three types of motions. The first is a lateral diffusion, which means sperm, excuse me, molecule A and molecule B, they are levers, and they can switch positions. This motion happens very frequently. The second motion is rotation. It also happens very frequently. The single lipid molecule will rotate along the axis on which its tail lies on. The third motion happens very rarely. It's flip flop, which means two lipid molecules that are tail to tail. Will switch positions. Besides the flexible lipid molecules, there are also transmembrane proteins scattered across the membranes. So the lipid rafts are specialized membrane domains. The lipid rafts are more rigid than the flexible small lipid molecules. Lipid rafts, as shown in this cartoon. Contain high concentration of cholesterol, sphingobilin, gangliosides, and saturated fatty chains. Acetylcholine receptor is one of the very important transmembrane proteins. It has five subunits: two alphas, one beta, one gamma, and one delta. For each subunit, there are four cylinders. One cylinder means one alpha helix. There is also an intracellular loop between the number three and the number four alpha helices. These alpha helices are buried in the cell membrane, meaning that they are very hydrophobic, or they are mainly composed of hydrophobic amino acids. And now we are going to talk about hydropathy plot. So on the x-axis of the hydropathy plot. Is the residual number of amino acids, and on the y-axis is the hydropathy index. The red zigzag line on this plot does not, again, does not represent the hydropathy index of a single amino acid. It does represent the average value of. The hydropathy index of a window size of amino acids. The window size can be three, four, any number you want. There are twenty amino acids, and for each one of them, there is a corresponding numer numerical value. The twenty different values are called polarity scale for the amino acids. Each value is. The amount of energy that is required to remove an amino acid from a transmembrane alpha helix to the water. So we have a alpha helix here. It is buried in the cell membrane. The alpha helix is composed of a chain of amino acids. And now you want to remove one of the amino acids from inside the membrane to water. As you all know, this region of the membrane is hydrophobic. 
the amino acids that make up of the transmembrane region are hydrophobic as well. Therefore, if we want to remove a hydrophobic amino acid from a hydrophobic region to water, it is hard and it requires energy. In this case, the energy is positive. Vice versa, if you want to move a hydrophilic amino acid to water, it will be easier and uh, energy is negative. For a hydropathy plot, there is a running window. The size of the window in this course is 17. We will talk about that later. So how do people construct a hydropathy plot? Let's say you have a chain of amino acids, a long chain. You select the window size of 17, which means you take the average of the first 17 polarity index and uh, the middle number of 17 is 9. We report number 9 on the x-axis and then you move the window by 1. So you are taking the average from number 2 to how many? Number 18. And the middle number of number 2 to number 18 is number 10. You have another average polarity index and you report the average value at location 10. That is why you don't see the y values of the very first few amino acids. Because even if you are taking average from number 1 to number 17, the first number on the x-axis is the middle point of number 1 to number 17. It is 9. And there is no value for number 1, number 2, number 3 on the x-axis. So let's talk about the window size. In this course, 17 is the window size. I mean, it's the best window size for identifying the alpha helix. Why? Because 17 is the number of amino acids you need to make up a transmembrane alpha helix. So from here to here, there are 17 amino acids. If you are running the window from this region, you will get a, well, most likely a negative value because this region is hydrophilic region. When you are taking the average of the amino acids from exactly here to here, you will get a maximal polarity index. Even if you move a little bit further, let's say from here to here, the value will be smaller because this part is hydrophilic. A window size that is either too small or too big will be non-informative. Therefore, you will see a peak for a alpha helix. As you can see here. Thanks for watching. Hope this helps.